What's up, guys? Today's video is going to be a little bit different than the normal content that you see from me on my channel. I wanted to take some time to talk about the publisher of Blue Protocol in the West, Amazon Games or AGS for short, as I've seen a lot of conversations on social media on this topic. Since the minute that Amazon Games was announced as the publisher for Blue Protocol in the West, players have made it very clear that they either do not approve or are at the very least skeptical. In this video, I want to give some context to players' concerns by giving a little history of Amazon Games. Toward the end of the video, I do want to discuss the known changes for the Western release of Blue Protocol as announced by Amazon, as well as give my thoughts on Amazon Games as a publisher. While Amazon seems to be pretty hated in the MMORPG space, it's pretty hard to find any consistently praised publishers of MMOs besides maybe Square Enix with Final Fantasy XIV. Even then, it's hard to compare the publishing of a game released a decade ago with all the changes to monetization the gaming market has seen since that time. So is Amazon really as bad as people think? As a qualifier to this video, I have over 800 hours of playtime in Amazon's most popular game at the moment Lost Ark, which was over the course of about six months starting from launch day. I have firsthand experience with Amazon as a publisher and have definitely formed my own opinions of AGS from playing one of their games. With that out of the way, let's talk about a little history of Amazon games. Amazon started in the gaming market back in 2012, which seems to coincide with the launch of the Amazon App Store. At that time, they were developing and publishing some lesser known mobile games, which appeared to mainly support their new platform. If you know anything about Amazon games, you've probably heard of their co-founder, Mike Frazzini, who helped start the offshoot and served as its vice president until stepping down last year. Frazzini started at Amazon in 2004 in the books division and worked his way up to leading the effort at Amazon Game Studios. Prior to this point, he had no programming or video game development experience, which in most cases is not a good sign for success. It was not until 2014 that they announced they'd be producing PC games and in the same year acquired the streaming platform Twitch. In 2016, Amazon Games announced its first three PC games, Breakaway, Crucible, and New World, which is really where AGS gets its reputation. Breakaway was a 2v2 brawler resembling something like a mix of Rocket League and League of Legends that was being developed and published by Amazon Game Studios. The game was being developed from the start for streaming and the esports market, and even held some matches back on Twitch in 2017 to a whopping 100 viewers. Jokes aside, the game actually looked pretty fun, but I don't think AGS was able to improve the core gameplay enough to anticipate any long-term success, and the game was eventually canceled back in 2018. Crucible was a free-to-play, third-person hero shooter, very much akin to Overwatch. The game was being developed by Relentless Studios, a subsidiary of Amazon Games. The game actually managed to launch in May 2020 after six years of development before going back to closed beta the next month in June and eventually being canceled in October of the same year. This has to compete for one of the shortest game runs of all time. Between Crucible and New World, Amazon Games released the Grand Tour game, a racing game based on an Amazon original TV show of the same name. This game released in January 2019 to average reviews, but even then was pulled from all retail and online stores the next year so that the devs could quote unquote, focus our efforts and resources on other projects. In other words, the game wasn't generating revenue and was shelved from further development. As you can see, Amazon Game Studios got off to a rough start to say the least, and most studios without a crazy financial backing would likely no longer be around. Now we arrive at New World, AGS's first real successful game launch. While the game boasted massive concurrent player counts and sales numbers, it surely was not without its issues. I don't want to get into the issues with New World too much because I have not played the game, but as an MMO fan and gaming content creator, I definitely saw a lot of coverage at the time of release. New World was originally planned to launch in 2020, but was delayed by over a year due to issues experienced in the alpha and beta tests. The issues which I believe contributed most to the delay was the full loot open world PvP that generally appeals to a fairly small audience. After a pretty major overhaul to the New World systems, the game held its final closed beta in July 2021 with no shortage of bugs and exploits. Among the worst was the numerous reports of RTX 3090s being bricked due to the game rendering massive uncapped frame rates. Card manufacturers weren't innocent here, but either was Amazon. Eventually, the game released in September 2021, which is where the true chaos begins. 
The game launched at huge queue times, but this is pretty typical of any MMORPG. The real issues were the endless bugs and exploits. This included things like incorrect weapon and armor descriptions, weapon imbalances, gold and item duplication, and numerous exploits such as the ability to turn temporary buffs into permanent ones. Shout out to Tibar over on Reddit for the awesome summary. I think that the average MMO player gets satisfaction from their accomplishments in a game, and these type of game breaking bugs take away from the legitimate accomplishments of players. Fortunately for Blue Protocol fans, these type of bugs are much more on the developer than the publisher. That said, there were a number of other issues surrounding launch that were much more indicative of publisher issues than developer ones. These included trading not working when offline, random gold being given out to servers, allowing players to completely empty auction houses, and some servers randomly skipping weeks into the future. Just look at this list of issues acknowledged by Amazon during launch week. I would expect quite a few things to be caught shortly after the launch, but this list is just insane. As a result of all of this, the game lost most of its player base within a couple months of launch. In Amazon's defense, the game made a pretty solid recovery toward the end of last year with the release of new content and fresh start servers, which is definitely a good sign for the health of the game overall. New World has definitely had its ups and downs, but I do think the game can have a future if Amazon keeps putting resources into improving its experience. This is really the first example that Amazon has put resources into improving a game rather than just abandoning it, so it's definitely a step forward for the studio. Now let's talk about Lost Ark, as this is Amazon's first MMO that they have published but not developed, very similar to the Blue Protocol situation. Playing Lost Ark for 814 hours, I'm intimately familiar with the Lost Ark issues experienced in the West. The game again launched to massive success, even exceeding New World, and managed to maintain a huge player base significantly longer than New World could. This is likely because Lost Ark was a fully polished game at this point, and a really good game at that. Even with the fact that Lost Ark has been out in Korea for two years, the Western version had many, many issues. While I'm focusing on issues, I do believe Lost Ark has been a success for AGS, and that they're moving in the right direction, focusing on publishing games rather than developing them. On launch, the game had massive queue times, again pretty typical for MMOs. The European server queue times were so bad that they were on the order of 6 to 8 hours. There was nearly daily server maintenance, and then once players could enter the game, there were matchmaking issues making it impossible to enter group content. Amazon eventually opened new servers which helped mitigate the problem at the time, but as the player base dropped, introduced new problems without any solution for server merges until many servers were virtually empty and unplayable. I played on the NA West servers, and approximately 5 months into release, the bots were so bad that my queue times were often 1-3 to three hours at peak times, which is not acceptable after launch week in my opinion. This was just the start. On top of this, almost every weekly maintenance created new problems that led to a second maintenance the next day or extended maintenance times. Content pacing was poor and important content needed for materials was left out of the game as Smilegate worked towards catching up the Western and Korean versions. There were also a number of publisher specific issues that were most frustrating to me as a player of the game. The localization of the game is pretty lacking, with lots of text errors and mistranslations. The story content was never really the draw to this game, and I really hope Amazon does a better job with Blue Protocol. There was consistently poor communication or lacking communication. The first major raid was released two days after being announced. Roadmaps were delayed and published days before updates. This article is from April about an April roadmap that is still being finalized. What? Poor advertising for new content compared to every other region, recent disconnect issues that have seemingly been ignored and prevent players from progressing and really just enjoying the game, and one of the more egregious mistakes involving handing out rewards to players mistakenly and issuing an emergency maintenance to take the rewards back. All of these issues are inherently bad and show some mismanagement on behalf of both Amazon and Smilegate. There are other things that Amazon changed in the Western release of Lost Ark from the original version published in Korea by Smilegate that aren't inherently bad, but are considered bad by some portion of the player base. 
First, AGS and Smilegate changed the skin color of some NPCs in the game. In their words, while Lost Ark has millions of active players around the world, there may be some content in-game that is unexpected for some Western audiences. Sometimes this can include cultural references, imagery, or nuances that are unfamiliar to us. While our goal is to preserve the authenticity of the original game, we also feel localization updates can be made to make the game feel more approachable and representative of our Western players. Second, Amazon recently confirmed censorship of the new artist class coming to the West, which has a child body type, stating nothing gameplay related will change for the artist class, but some skins will be modified to better fit Western norms. Whether you're okay with these changes or not, AGS has set a precedence to make similar changes with other titles in the future. Before touching on what all of this may mean for the future of Blue Protocol, I want to highlight some of the positives that I believe AGS brings to the table as a publisher. Lost Ark holds the record for the second highest peak concurrent players of all time on Steam behind PUBG. New World holds the sixth spot in this list, both of which are pretty insane for MMORPGs. As of the time of making this video, Lost Ark was still at number three for concurrent players on Steam. Amazon owns Twitch and have shown that they have massive reach on this platform, with Lost Ark seeing 1.2 million peak viewers and New World seeing 977,000 peak viewers around their launches. This is essentially free advertising that Amazon can capitalize on and get the game in front of more players, which is invaluable for the game's success. Amazon runs the second largest web hosting platform in the world and with good staff should be able to very successfully host this game. From the monetization of New World and Lost Ark, Amazon has demonstrated that they are far from the greediest publisher of live service games. Finally, while some may disagree, Amazon have listened to Lost Ark players' concerns and worked with Smilegate to make many changes for the better, including honing updates and introduction of content to make progression faster, updating content pacing to better suit free-to-play players, increased class release speed, and expediting some more popular skins. And this is where the AGS saga leaves off going into the release of Blue Protocol. At this time, we do not have a ton of information from Amazon on things they may be changing for the Western release of the game. They have given us some information, especially through an interview with the German website Mine MMO. In this interview with Mike Zadorzno, the franchise lead at Amazon and former director of Guild Wars 2, AGS states that they're making changes to the cash shop specifically for the Western market to suit Western players. AGS did make changes to the Lost Ark cash shop that were undoubtedly for the better. In the same interview, Mike mentions that AGS is aiming for a teen rating. There seems to be a lot of conflicting and potentially misleading information online regarding interviews with Mike that differ from that published on Mine MMO, which appears to be the original source. The Mine MMO interview simply states that Amazon believes Blue Protocol will achieve big success because it is a mainstream and casual game that will be getting a teen rating. Other interviews from what appear to be clickbait sites seem to summarize the original interview and present the teen rating as a change from the JP version. Personally, I do not see anything in the game that would warrant an age rating above teen anyway. Amazon's promotional art for the game features several darker skinned characters. This seems to align with Amazon's goal to appeal to the Western audience. While I believe the large majority of players approve of this choice, or are at least indifferent, there's certainly a vocal minority of players who want the game as created by Bandai for the JP audience. It is also worth noting that AGS's previous head, Mike Frazzini, is no longer running the show, which I believe a lot of people think is only a good thing for the studio's success. The Blue Protocol team at AGS is also being led by Mike Zadorzno, who has a background in game design and development and was the previous director of Guild Wars 2. While Amazon have definitely made many mistakes with Lost Ark and New World, Blue Protocol is a different game, and because of these differences may not suffer from the same issues, even if Amazon hasn't improved as a publisher. One of these differences is that Blue Protocol uses a mega server shared for the entire region with instant zones. Zones are separated into channels, and these channels have player caps. This allows for a maximum number of players to be in a zone at any given time. The devs did note that you can party up with other players to join their channel or travel between zones and remain together. This eliminates the issue of server transfers unless you're trying to switch between regions and also ensures that servers remain populated and you'll be able to play with any friends in your region and not have to worry about server selection at launch. 
Another difference is that there's no confirmed auction house or player trading at game launch and no plans to add this in the future. This should greatly reduce or eliminate the bot problem. Finally, content pacing should be highly governed by Bandai as the original JP server should only be roughly six months ahead of the Amazon servers at launch. This should lead to a relatively straightforward roadmap with either a short expedited Western schedule at launch or a consistent six month lag. Well, I think it's way too early to determine Blue Protocol's Western release dead on arrival because of the involvement of Amazon games, I do understand the concerns of the community. The Blue Protocol dev team have demonstrated over the past few years that they're very receptive to community feedback and making changes to the game, which I do believe will help significantly in the success of the game in the West. As a former Lost Ark player, I definitely found Amazon's competency as a publisher embarrassing at times, although this wasn't the reason I quit the game in the end. I do have hope that Amazon can turn things around and see long-term success with Blue Protocol, and I'm very optimistic for the future of the game. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. If you found the video entertaining or informative and want to see more Blue Protocol content in the future, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I'll see you all soon for the next video. Peace.